Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. A medieval German philosopher once sagely remarked that there is no place on a cart where a fifth wheel can be used. And yet, it would appear that life itself abounds in what might be considered fifth wheels. All those supernumeraries who are always coming along just for the ride. How easily they can transform a safe and pleasant promenade into a vulnerable, perilous pilgrimage. He had you, Fred. He was going to take away your home, wasn't he? Yes. You couldn't face your wife with that kind of news. No, I, I couldn't. Therefore, you killed him. I didn't. Hey, I, I know it looks bad, but I, I'm not the kind of person who could kill. <laughs> I heard that before. I'm different, Captain. Uh, I heard that before, too. But I can prove I'm different. <laughs> mystery drama, Natural Sugar, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Fred Gwynn. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Saturn. For three years, the theater has been packed. The play could probably run forever. It's a pretty good mystery story. But it happens to star Emmett and Louise Brundage. And it doesn't matter what they do. They could even, as the saying goes, read the telephone directory to standing room only. We are watching their play approach its climax. They are alone on stage. He sits with his back to her in an easy chair facing the window. She is at the table pouring a cup of tea. And of course you want your own special sugar, my dearest. He nods his head. She picks up a paper sugar packet. There's a gasp from the audience. They know it contains poison. Breathless, they watch her tear it open and pour the contents into his cup. Here you are, my darling. He needs that cup of tea. He drinks with appreciation. Suddenly he stops. There's a look of terror on his face. He tries to speak. He cannot. The cup and saucer drop from his trembling hands. He pitches forward. Falls in a crumpled heap on the floor. In a few moments, the audience recovers from its shock. We hear the applause as the curtain falls. Oh, my darling, your hands are so expensive these days. Should you give so much of it away for free? Ready for your bows now. Uh, how about it, Mr. Bondage? Emmett, get up so we can take a bow. Are you going to lie there all day? Emmett? Hey, what's wrong? Fred, don't raise the curtain. Hey, hey, what's the matter? Get a doctor. Don't touch anything on that table. Who, well, who are you? And what are you doing backstage? I'm Captain Altman of Homicide. H Homicide? And, uh, who are you? Uh, I'm, uh, a Fred Bantam. I'm the stage manager. I see. Just, uh, exactly what are you doing? Well, I'm getting ready for tonight's performance. Uh, even if Mr. Brundage can't go on, his understudies... Uh, also... Mr. Brundage is never going on again. What do you mean? He's, he's dead? He's been poisoned. Uh, which is why I'm here. Poisoned? Are you... Are you sure? Well, I suppose you must be. Uh, what did you think had happened to him? Well, I, I thought he might have just uh, collapsed, you know, a heart attack or something. Mm -hmm. That's what you thought? Oh, yes, sir. I've seen it happen before on the stage. A performer just collapses. Yeah, well, now you know. It wasn't a heart attack. Yeah. So now that you tell me he was poisoned. Uh... <laughs> funny. Funny? Uh, what's uh, funny about a man being poisoned? Oh, nothing. It's just that every night he's uh, supposed to be poisoned in the play, and here he... Uh... Well, go figure it. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm trying to do. It uh, 
so happens that I saw this play. Oh, did you like it? Uh, my wife dragged me. Seventeen bucks a piece. It wasn't worth... But anyhow, she poisons him in the play, right? Yeah, you could say she acts as the instrument. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, well, the audience isn't supposed to be quite sure. About what? Whether she meant to poison him or whether his clever plot to poison her simply backfired. <laughs> Seemed to me that for 17 bucks we ought to know. Now, uh, she poisoned the tea out of that pot on the table? Yes, Captain. I see. Uh, has anybody touched that pot since the curtain went down on the matinee? Oh, no. So there's uh, still some tea in here. Uh, say, Ernie, run this down to the lab, will you? I assure you, Captain, there's nothing wrong with it. How do you know? Well, because I brewed that tea myself. <laughs> Nobody said you were in the clear, either. It was real tea, huh? Yeah, yeah, a, a special herb tea that Mr. Brundage was fond of. See, all his props had to be realistic, and, and the sugar, it had to be that particular kind, the only kind he would take. It's a natural sugar. Yeah, you can see the packets in the bowl. Mm -hmm. So she picks one up, tears it open, and she pours it into the teacup. Yeah. And uh, that's the one that had the aconite. The, the what, Captain? Uh, it's a type of strychnine. Does the work like the bite of a cobra. Now, what happened to the... Uh... To, to the what, sir? Uh, here we are. The empty packet. Yeah. Hey, Ernie, you want to come back here a minute? There's uh, still some grains of sugar, plus whatever else in this little package here. Now, will you have the lab go through it also? Okay, Fred. So, uh, you brewed the tea? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I'd heat it up and give it to Arlette to bring on stage. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, she plays the maid, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Arlette Jackson. Fred, I want everybody in the cast, everybody in the crew, everybody who was here on this side of the footlights to be ready for questions. <laughs> Captain Altman? Yeah? Okay, thanks. That was the lab. The teapot's clean. But the sugar packet was loaded. Uh, so now, Fred, uh, how did they get there? <laughs> I don't know, Captain. Uh, who bought those packets? I did. Uh, see, we played eight performances a week, and Mr. Brundage would use one for each performance. Now, they come 24 to the box, so I'd make sure at least every two weeks to... So where did you buy them? At the Aquarius. Where? Oh, that's a health food place. <laughs> that's all Mr. Brundage would ever eat, health foods. So I'd open the box and place the packets into this little bowl on the table. I'd just have to remember to keep the bowl full. I see. So, uh, how did the aconite get into one of the packets? <sighs> I don't know. Mm -hmm. Is everybody here? Yes, sir. Oh, except for Louise Brundage. She's she's home. The uh, doctor has her under sedation. Send in this, uh, uh, what's, what's her name? This uh, Arlette Jackson. Yes, sir. Isn't it just dreadful, Captain? Uh, what do you know about it, Miss Jackson? Oh, nothing. I was watching from the wings. And I saw him drink the tea. And he fell down, dead. It's awful. And you say it was murder? Yes, I do. Oh, that makes it even worse. Uh, did you have any idea of who might have killed him? We all saw who killed him. Louise Brondage. Uh, what I meant was, you have any idea who would want to kill him? Oh, she would. Mrs. Brundage, why? Why don't you ask her? <laughs> Uh, thank you, Miss Jackson. Oh, is that all? Uh, there'll be more later. I hope so. Uh, I mean, I... Uh, yeah? <laughs> this is the first time I've ever been involved in a murder case. Uh, are you involved, Miss Jackson? Well, what I mean is, it, it doesn't happen very often, and to think that this is all there is to it. <laughs> you want more? It would be good for my career. Oh, don't get me wrong, but the publicity and all. Oh, I can just imagine how this sounds. <laughs> can you really? Oh, Cold-blooded, 
talent and insensitive. But you see, my name will be in the paper. And I'll be interviewed on all the TV news shows. Uh-huh. It's the publicity break I need. Mm-hmm. The break I've waited for all these years. Getting back to Mrs. Brundage. Uh, why do you say she might want to kill him? Because he was going to leave her. He was? Why? Because he'd found another woman. Who? Me. I'm sorry I have to talk with you at this time, Mrs. Brundage. It's as good or as bad a time as any, Captain Altman. Uh, Mrs. Brundage, will you have any reason to want to murder your husband? No. Uh, That isn't what I hear. What do you hear, Captain? Backstage gossip? Well, um, was he having an affair with Arlette Jackson? Yes. Well, couldn't that be considered a motive? My dear Captain Altman, if I'd have murdered my husband every time he had an affair, he'd have died, I won't say a thousand deaths, but he'd have needed more lives than a cat. Uh, Infidelity can be a motive. So... I murdered him because he was having an affair with Arlette. It was more than an affair. He was going to leave you. For Arlette? Yes. Who says so? She does. I'm afraid Miss Jackson has her facts slightly awry. In uh, what way? In every way. I may have been a bit too liberal with Emmett. You see, he was 55. Oh, he didn't look it. I'm 60. (laughs) Uh, You certainly don't look it. Thank you, Captain. Well, we'd been married for almost 30 years. For most of them, he'd been an average, faithful husband. But something happened to him just after his 50th birthday. He suddenly had this terrible fear of growing old. But I don't think you could understand that. I do. I'm 51. Oh, you don't look it. And so he became, well, a health food nut. Natural foods, organically grown foods, all sorts of exotic roots and juices. And then, of course, there was the matter of his virility. Was he still desirable to young ladies? Well, you never know until you try. Wouldn't you say, Captain? Uh, 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 Yeah, I I guess that's right. But uh, you held still for it. My dear Captain, one is faced with a choice of evils. And sometimes one can only select the lesser. If I divorced him, he would lose the anchor that held him to the world of reality. Uh, Was there another reason? Such as? Such as self-interest. Of course, Captain. One must never overlook self-interest. If he had died, it would be the end of the Brundages. Perhaps the world's most famous theatrical couple. Without him, I might become just another elderly actress looking for work. Yeah, but you wouldn't have to wait for a part. Oh, but I would. Emmett and I didn't have to spend years hoping for the right script, as so many actors do. Whenever we needed something, Emmett would sit down and write it himself. Mm. Uh, Let's get back to little Miss Arlette. Well, as I said, I tolerated Emmett's little liaisons as long as they did no harm to our professional careers. But Arlette Jackson was another breed of cat. You see, he had to give her something. Uh, What was that? A part in the play. Something for which she is absolutely unqualified. So I said to Emmett, Darling, your extracurricular affair cannot be given stage center. She is ruining the play. She is out. Yes, and... uh... Whatever else he is, or or was, Emmett Brundage was first and foremost an actor. So therefore, he said, Darling, you're right. She must be given notice. You mean he had her fired? Yes, Captain Altman. And so now, how can it be said that Emmett Brundage was about to leave his wife for Miss Arlette Jackson. I don't know. I need a little more to go on. What do we know so far? We know we have a man who has what appears to be quite a formidable wife. He has quite an appetite for extramarital affairs. 
these would appear to be mutually exclusive, as indeed they were. Now, what we must do in Act Two is try to discover who did the excluding. In professional sports, a man is hired because of his youth and strength, basically. When that is gone, he is fired. In private industry, a person is hired to perform a job. When that person's ability declines, for whatever reason, that person is fired. Yes? Now, a man marries a girl because she's beautiful and sexy. I know this has the most violent overtones of male chauvinism, but I'm merely reporting the world we live in. After some time, she's no longer beautiful. It's not so easy to get rid of her. So, what do a great many men do? They start looking for greener pastures. Fred. Yes, Captain. Uh, is it true that Arlette Jackson was going to be fired? Yes, but uh, we were sitting on it till we could get a replacement. Why? Uh, I guess it was pretty common knowledge. She and Emmett Brundage were having a thing. I see, and Mrs. Brundage didn't like it? Well, it was partially that. What was the rest of it? Well, he was... He was getting tired of her. I see. If it hadn't been for the relationship she was having with Emmett Brundage, would she have gotten the part? <laughs> Are you kidding? Maybe she's got the legs to be a showgirl in Vegas, but she doesn't belong on a Broadway stage. So, we have a three-character play on the stage. Mr. Brundage, his wife, and the maid. It's one set, library. Yeah, everything happens right here. Yes, sir. Uh, you never change anything on the set, right? Uh, it just remains in position. Here's the table. It has the bowl with the sugar packets. Uh, it's here all the time, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everything you need for the play is also here all the time. The only thing that gets brought on is the teapot and the tray with the cups and saucers. That's right. But the poison, uh, it doesn't come from the teapot. It's in one of the packets on the table. And Mrs. Brundage is the one who pours it into the cup. Now, how does Arlette manage to get her to use the right packet? Are you saying that Arlette murdered Mr. Brundage? I'm saying we should discuss it further. You weren't telling me the truth, Miss Jackson. About what, Captain? Uh, first of all, you implied that Louise Brundage poisoned her husband because he was going to throw her over for you. It's true. Uh, not too sure about that. I understand he got you fired from the play. Who told you that? Well, it, it doesn't mean anything. I see it doesn't, huh? No. You see, it was all a kind of a cover-up. For what? He was crazy about me. There wasn't anything he wouldn't do for me. Uh, that doesn't seem to square with the facts. What facts? Uh, the cold, cruel facts of life, Miss Jackson. A. He fired you from the play because his wife ordered him to. B. According to the best available information around here, he was getting tired of you anyhow. Do you want to hear what was really going on? What? Well, to begin with. You're a man. Who would you rather come home to? Me? Or an old bag like Louise? Uh, Mrs. Jackson, Louise Brundage has certain charms. Oh, yes, but she's had him too long. He wasn't in any position to cross her. Oh, not yet. And uh, why is that? Well, they had this kind of magic. You know what I mean. It was worth a million bucks a year. He wanted to do one more play. Yeah? Well, he was writing. It would be a play in which the wife would commit suicide and the guy would fall in love with this beautiful young girl. You get it? Go on. And in the end of the play, he would have such a great scene with the young girl that the public would want to see the two of them together again. We would be perfect foils for each other. Mm -hmm. uh, all this he told you? Yes. Uh, stick around. I'm going to want to talk to you again. Oh. 
Mrs. Brundage, was your husband working on another play? What do you mean, Captain? Uh, was he? Well, he was always putting down ideas, but as far as a definite new play, no. Uh, if he were working on another play, would you know about it? Well, I think so. As a matter of fact, I, I would have to. How could I be unaware of it? Uh, so he was not, to the best of your knowledge, working on a play in which a man kills his wife because he wants to marry a young girl? No. I can say he was not. Uh, Mrs. Brundage, it's been established that your husband died because of the sugar packet that you emptied into the teacup. Yes, you've told me. Well, certainly there are enough witnesses to what happened. You reached into that small silver bowl, took a packet, opened it, poured it, and that did the job. My question, was there anything about that particular packet that would make you pick it up? No. What were you conscious of when you selected it? You say selected, but I didn't select it. I just reached in. Uh, were you conscious of picking one rather than another? No. Uh, <laughs> were you conscious of anything? No. I just took the first one that came to hand. That would be the one on top. Captain Altman, am I a suspect? Uh, Mrs. Brundage, when I'm on a murder case, everybody's a suspect. Would it make sense for me to kill my husband in front of 800 witnesses? Uh, no, it wouldn't make sense, but uh, maybe you're counting on us to believe that. You don't do much for a person's ego, Captain. <laughs> I'm not in that business. Uh, let's go through motives. You had one, the betrayed wife. Arlette Jackson had one, the spurned girlfriend. Uh, what other motives do we have? Oh, there were a great many people who disliked Emmett. Yes? Mostly because he was successful. Uh, uh, did any of them dislike him enough to kill him? What is enough? Uh, beside you, who would gain by Emmett's death? There's always that, isn't there? Uh, money. No matter what you hear about love, money and what it can buy is still the number one cause for homicide. You might continue your discussions with Fred Bantam. Uh, the stage manager? Yes. He's been a stage manager for a long time. And he has dreamed that stage manager's dream, to become a producer. Some time ago, he needed some front money. Uh, what's that? Money to get started on a production, to option a play and get various things in motion. Mm -hmm. He needed about oh, $10,000. He asked Emmett to invest, but Emmett said no. He'd lend him the money. Ten thousand, huh? Mm, at a pretty good rate of interest. Emmett was quite shrewd about his dollars. Lately, I understand Fred's been having trouble keeping up with his payments. Yeah, I see. Uh, thank you. Fred, uh... Look at the silver bowl with the sugar packets in it, will you? What about it, Captain? Uh, now, you generally keep it pretty full, right? Yeah, we uh, can't take a chance on running short. Uh-huh. Somebody had to prepare a packet. The, the one here that we had analyzed at the lab, grains of the poison were still in it. What uh, he or she did was to carefully slit the packet open, slip in some of the poison... And then glue it together again. If you uh, look closely, you can see where it was done. Now, if Louise Brundage did it... Uh, are you accusing her? Uh, I said if. Uh, she'd have known which packet it was. But if Arlette is guilty, how would Arlette get her to pick up the right one? Are you accusing Arlette? Or uh, how would you get Mrs. Brundage to pick up the right one. Hey, are you accusing me? Not much of a problem. Uh, you or Arlette would place the poison packet on top of the others, the very top one. That's the one she'd automatically pick. Now, 
If accidentally her fingers might brush it aside, this performance, uh, then the next one. Sooner or later, it would happen. Now, look. You just accused me... Uh, you're the stage manager. And you also had access to the ball. Well, if you're going to go that route, there's the carpenter, the electrician, the stagehands. All kinds of people move around backstage. I'm talking about people who had motive. Well, I didn't have a motive. You didn't owe him $10,000 plus interest? Well, sure, but the, that's no motive. It could be if you don't have the money to pay him back. I was... All right. I was having some problems. Mm -hmm. I bought a copy of this uh, show business paper. There's an article in it. It says you dropped a bundle of money on a little project for Broadway. Well, that isn't true. You, you're saying the article is false? It's an exaggeration. It wasn't a bundle. Of... But it was money. Well, sure, it was money. And did Emmett Brundage read this? He... He heard about it. Mm, and was he angry? Yeah, you could say he was. Uh, I would assume his point was... If you could raise money for a project, you could have raised money to pay him back. That's right. Did he get tough about it? He... He was going to get tough. Uh -huh. How tough? Uh, we own this piece of property up on the lake, my wife and I. It's worth maybe ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000. But it's the one thing my wife would never part with. She's, She's got this dream of building a cottage there when I retire. Mm-hmm. And he could make you sell it. Yeah, he could. I, I'd put it up as collateral. And you just couldn't face your wife with that kind of news? No, I, I couldn't. So, you killed him? No. No, I didn't. Come on, Fred. Look, I know it looks bad, but I, I, I didn't kill him. I, I'm not the kind of guy who could kill anybody. I've heard that before. Yeah, I know you have, but I'm different. Captain, I can prove I'm different. And we're going to give Fred every chance to do that in Act Three. You must admit, we have a fair share of suspects, and each of them has adequate motivation. Is it the wife, the girlfriend, or the stage manager? One of the above? None of the above? Or perhaps all of the above? We shall compare notes shortly in Act Three. a certain debt that cancels all others. It may be a debt of honor or a debt of money. It may be a debt of love or a debt of hate. But given the time and the place and the temper, it becomes the debt that must be paid in blood. Only life itself can satisfy the claim. It happens because the debtor forgets that a man or a woman can be pushed just so far and no further. I couldn't kill anybody, Captain. I swear to you, I'm not a killer. Sure. You've got to believe me. It, it's a fact. Look, look at me. What am I? You're a stage manager. That's right, that's right. And it proves my point. I can tell you more about the theater than anyone around. Modesty, I see, is not one of your faults. Ask people. I have taste. I have an eye for talent. Everyone always wants my advice. <laughs> I know. You want to ask me. I'm so smart. How come I'm not rich? Consider it asked. It's because I've got everything you need in this business except the one thing you can't do without. The killer instinct. <laughs> I'm a nice guy. I don't move in. I don't set people up for the kill. I don't take advantage of their misfortunes. I don't drive a hard bargain. How could I have killed Emmett Brundage? How? Yeah, because the worm eventually has to turn. Somewhere along the way, Brundage takes a stand. And if that real estate means what it did to your wife, you'd have to kill for it. No! I've seen guys like you. The little woman's been picking up the tab for all those busted dreams of yours all these years. She's been doing without. She's been living on hopes. You just couldn't face her with what you'd done. That's right. <laughs> I couldn't. You had to kill him. There was no other way. Oh, yes. Yes, there was. What? What's making that bulge on your hip underneath your coat? Hmm? That's your revolver, isn't it? I bought one, Captain. 
was trying to work up enough nerve to kill myself. Uh, and then this thing happened. Yeah. So what? You're still not off the hook. The debt's a part of his estate. You still owe. Oh, I know, but uh, she's a lady. She, she, she won't press me. Uh, oh, uh, excuse me. I'll have to answer that. Uh, backstage, Jefferson Theater. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, just a minute. Uh, Captain? Oh, thanks. Uh, Captain Altman, yeah. She what? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll be right there. Well, looks like you're a lucky day, Fred. Arlette Jackson just confessed to the murder of Emmett Brundage. <laughs> The uh, sergeant tells me you want to make a statement, Miss Jackson. Yes, I do, Captain. Why did you uh, kill Emmett Brundage? You know why. I do? Well, you even told me. Because he used me. Uh, how did you kill him? You know how. With the poison sugar packet in the bowl. But you're not the one who had to pick it up uh, and open it and pour it into his tea. That's right. So, how could you make sure Mrs. Brundage picked up the right one? Any of them could have been the right one. Uh, uh, just how is that? I got hold of enough of that stuff to make up about half a dozen packets. Just before the show began, I emptied the bowl of the real sugar packets and put the poison ones in. So, whichever she picked. I see. After the show, I was able to sneak the poison ones out and put the other ones back. Oh, but weren't you afraid you might be arrested later? No. I thought she'd be blamed. Well, you know, the jealous wife angle. Just why do you want to confess? Why? Because I'm guilty, that's why. I thought I could get away with it. But I've got a conscience. It would bother me too much. All right, Miss Jackson. Uh, Ernie, uh, uh, get a typist in here, will you? Are you Captain Altman? Yes. Uh, they said to see you. Uh, about what? About Arlette Jackson. What about Arlette Jackson? Uh, excuse me, my name is Leon Dupre. I'm, I was Miss Jackson's agent. Uh, strictly speaking, Mr. Dupre, I'm, uh, that is, my department is all through with Miss Arlette Jackson. You may be and you may not be. It all depends. On just what? She did not kill Emmett Brundage. She says she did. Miss Jackson is a young lady who says a great many things. Why do you say she didn't kill Brundage? I think you have to know something about Arlette Jackson. She's one of those very beautiful girls, and she thinks that her beauty is a substitute for talent. It may be in many forms of show business, but not in the legitimate theater. Uh, why are you telling me all this? Actually, Captain, I'm doing some of your work for you. She wanted our office to represent her. I said, I'm sorry, I didn't feel we could get her any work. She said, I can get a job just like that. And she did, quite a plum in this play with the Brundages. Go figure. So we took her on. But then, of course, the bubble burst. He was going to fire her. Which was her motive for the killing? I met with her a day or so after Brundage was poisoned. The play was finished, and so was her alleged career. I tried to explain it, but she wouldn't listen. She kept saying, Leon, I'm going to get a million dollars worth of publicity. You'll be swamped with offers from Broadway, Hollywood, TV. I'll be your biggest client. And how are you going to get all this fantastic publicity, I asked. And she said, wait and see. Then, a few hours later, she confessed to the crime. And you're saying she did it as a publicity stunt? Absolutely. Surely she understands this is a serious business. She can be tried for murder. She only understands what she wants to understand. She sees herself on the stand, an innocent girl from the country, seduced by that lecherous scoundrel, Emmett Brundage, who promised her everything, anything, and then cast her aside. 
She thinks the jury is going to give her a standing ovation. I think by this time she may even believe it herself. I'm convinced of it. Captain, you want to know why? Yes. He was a great method actor, that Emmett Brundage. You know, you had to believe in your part. You had to become the part. So, she absorbed it. The idea of being the killer. Look, Captain, all you've really got is her confession. You know what a smart defense lawyer can do with a confession. Especially the kind that is made in a police headquarters. <laughs> And so, Rex, if you think I'll put up with your insufferable patronizing just for the hope, the remote possibility that you'll favor me with a smile, an occasional kiss, permit me to tell you in no uncertain terms that the answer is yes. Yes, my darling. Yes. Oh, thank you, Louise, darling. That was marvelous, as usual. Uh, and, uh, thank you so much for coming. It's like old times. Very old times, Roger. Uh, we'll be in touch. Oh, hello. Uh, they said I'd find you at this theater, uh, uh auditioning. <laughs> we better move back to the stage door. Oh, I haven't had to do this in 30 years. <laughs> Uh, how about a cup of coffee? I, uh, noticed a place next door here. Well, thank you. I can use one. Back to the grind so soon, huh? Well, I have to keep working. Besides, the rent has to be paid every month. Oh, I... I thought you and Emmett were pretty well fixed. Don't believe everything you read about show business salaries. You were looking for me, Captain. Yes, I, uh, want to ask you a question. Uh, may I? Of course. When did you decide to kill your husband? How neatly you phrased that, Captain. Not did I, but when did I? Would you like to answer it? I don't have to, unless I'm formally charged. And even then, I wouldn't be required to. I have a feeling you want to answer do you? Why? Uh, Fred Bantam said it. But, uh, he didn't have to. It's obvious. You're a lady. Thank you. Ladies, uh, may be a disappearing breed. That's why when you encounter one, she stands out. What is the purpose of this flattery? Uh, it isn't flattery, Mrs. Brundage, if it's the truth. You are going to confess to Emmett's murder. But Arlette Jackson has already confessed. Uh, you and I know that Arlette Jackson is a kook. Why do you insist that I killed him? Murder is always a matter of motive. Fred Bantam had one. But being Fred Bantam, he was willing to be stepped on again. How well you know him. And on such short acquaintance. Mm -hmm. Arlette, uh, there's always another guy somewhere for her. Oh, yes. She has a long way to go before age catches up with her. It, uh, caught up with you. Finally. Yes? Your husband was a fool. <laughs> you see, he was writing a new play. Oh? Mm -hmm. I used to help him. He said to me, What would a woman write in a suicide note? A woman who would want to kill herself because her husband no longer loved her. And so I sat down and wrote such a note. Filled with the whole melodrama about life being at an end, no longer worth living. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, oh, what about it? Well, I wrote it, and I forgot about it. Then, one day, I came to the theater early. I overheard a conversation between Emmett and Arlette. She said, you promised to get rid of her, and he said, I will. Wait. I have a foolproof way. Everyone will think my wife did it herself. Yes. That made me remember the note. That night he was out. I looked for it. Through his desk, all his papers, and it wasn't there. Oh, I felt such relief. It was my imagination. Then I 
looked through his clothes. There in the pocket of the jacket was the note. I have it here in my bag. Uh, 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 may I? Yes. Life no longer has any meaning. He is my anchor, my beacon. Without him, what am I? He is seeking his youth, an illusion, but I must pay for it. And therefore... Don't bother, please. It was written for me. I could do something with it. It sounds terrible when you read it. Uh, And on the strength of this, you poisoned him? No. On the strength of a letter I found in his desk from a friend of ours, who was a chemist, and told him what poisons could act quickly. For playwriting purposes, you understand. And then I found some packets of sugar in his desk drawer. Why would they be there, I asked myself. Were they filled with poison? Yes. Uh, How did you find out? There was only one way. I brought one to the theater with me and emptied it into his tea for our final scene. You see, till then I couldn't really be sure. And uh, so you found out? The hard way. And so did Emmett. Just a split second before he died. Actually, it was uh, self-defense. In a way. You're right, Captain. I couldn't keep it a secret. I would have had to confess eventually. Confess? But don't be disappointed. Why would I be disappointed? If nobody believes you. You're such a lady. How could you do it? Perhaps you're only trying to protect poor little Arlette. Or, uh vulnerable Fred Bantam. But I have this note as evidence. Yeah. And who is to say you didn't type it this morning? But you believe me. Mrs. Brundage, I'm only a cop. Do you mean in the end no one will pay for Emmett's murder? But that's impossible. (laughs) Why do you say that? It happens all the time. It does happen often enough. We have all sorts of unsolved crimes for which no one ever seems to pay a price. And one way or another, they find their way back into the rear of the files, where they gather dust until someone needs the space. Then they are put somewhere else, where eventually they are lost or destroyed. And life goes on. I shall return shortly. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife or her husband, as the case might be. But what is there in some men and women that somehow can never be satisfied? It's a question that's fascinated writers throughout the centuries. If you took away all the works that dealt with adultery, the library shelves would be half empty. There would be almost no theater, and your movie and TV screens would hardly ever be lit. One thing you have to say for sin, it has inspired some of the great stories. Our cast included Fred Gwynn, E.V. Juster, and Russell Horton. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. We don't have much time if we're to catch the next train to Mackleton. I'm afraid that's out of the question. Have you heard nothing of the abduction of the only son of the Duke of Holderness? The ex-cabinet minister? Exactly. Excuse me, sir. What have you to do with the abduction? My dear Watson, Dr. Huxtable is the headmaster of one of England's most exclusive schools. Uh, It's only logical to assume that the boy was taken from his school. We we tried to keep it out of the papers, but last night the Globe printed some rumors which I thought might have reached your ears. I'm well aware that the Duke is one of the great men in the kingdom. Oh, and one of the wealthiest. His grace will hand a check for 5,000 pounds to whomever locates his son. Watson, pack a bag. We're accompanying Dr. Huxable to the north of England. Yes. 
Excellent, excellent. You relieve my mind, Mr. Holmes. Mrs. E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.